Hey Curious Bunch, we've heard you, our show is a little bit long, so here is a short snippet from it. Enjoy! So this thing here, and I'm really bad in like anything linear algebra, I never touched any of these things, but I decided I'm even gonna forget about this and read what this thing is from a computer science perspective, right? So there's this, some uh, wiggly brackets here, but normal computers communicate with bits. And now the pop science version of this is, well, but qubits are both zero and one at the same time, and I couldn't imagine this, right? But what you can imagine is, from computer science perspective, or if, if you know what uh, an array is, or what a list for all the Python lovers out there, uh, what is this? This is basically a range of numbers. For the mathematicians, this is a matrix, and for physicists, you already know everything, so I'm not gonna even try to explain it. But for the people who, don't, who, don't, who want to imagine it, imagine that the equivalent of a zero uh, in classical computers is this array, arranged uh, double uh, array of where the index zero has one and the index one has zero, and that's the zero qubit. The one qubit is an array where the zero element is zero and the first element is one. You can remember that because the index, which is in these wiggly brackets, which are called, uh, it's literally called bracket, right? It's Dirac's notation for this kind yeah. of, yeah? Yeah, bra, cat. Yeah. Bra, cat, because one of them is called bra and the other one is called cat, but you don't even have to know that, right? It's basically, you can imagine a qubit as two numbers. Okay. These are only cat vectors here that you've shown. Okay. So, do you want to explain this thing, or are we going to skip the maths? How do we want to do it? Um, we try to basically, it's, uh, it's already explained. Like, this is cat vectors, which are column vectors, and when you do the bra vector, which is this, but mirrored, the same, but mirrored, it's a, it's a row vector. So, and you multiply them like a regular vectors. That's the Dirac notation. It's really simple. Cool. And what... what what? As far as I know, yeah. it just like simplifies the uh, matrix multiplication in a way, and also because we use a lot of conjugates and transposes, so it makes all of those. It's just a notation that makes the math much simpler and pretty. Mike oh. makes math pretty, not simpler, because it's math is. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, but you okay. know what? That's what I kind of Pretty. started to realize when I, when I was reading about these kind of things. I, ha I can let go of the underlying physics. I can let go of imagining things and I can let go of the complicated math. I can just learn the rules of this mathematics. I can just let go of the idea of that doesn't make sense and I don't know what addition is. Just follow the rules. It's a simple book. And famously, Feynman really uh, kind of tried to do that when he was explaining uh, QED. He was just saying, you know, you have these arrows and you start spinning them and here are the rules for how you spin them. You don't have to bother with vectors and the multiplication and how it works and anything like that. So I decided to take this approach and I just imagined them as two numbers. Okay, so the question is, what do these two numbers represent? And what I understand is, and please start correcting me the moment I do say something stupid, okay? Because I'm merging from the computer science perspective into the physics perspective. But what I understand is that Basically, the zeroth um, element of this array represents the probability in some way. It's not exactly the probability, uh, but it's the square root of the probability that this, um, that this qubit, when you measure it, it's going to be a zero. And the first index of the array is the probability that it's going to be one. And the probability means that if you measure it a thousand times, uh, like, let's say it's, it's a zeroth uh, qubit, it means that if you measure it a thousand times, a thousand times of this, it will be uh, a zero. Does that make sense? If you have this representation. You actually have to have like a thousand identical systems and measure each one, because if you do it like measure one and then measure it again, you already collapsed the wave function, so you got, you got exactly the same result. Right. And actually, we, these are just the basis on which qubits, uh, what you shown, show on the screen, are actually just the basis on which qubits are uh, uh, represented. Because an actual qubit is something oh, that you looks... Oh, 
looks looks like this. <laughs> okay, we have a bit and more prepared, but like we have this is this is the square root of the the probability to have a zero. This is when you measure this the whole thing is a qubit. Right. Is that the same thing that I'm showing right now on the on the board, by the way? Yes, exactly. Perfect. Okay. So the first uh, that's the whole thing. And if you look, if you know a little bit of math and look at the second um, the second line, the one alpha squared uh, plus beta squared equal to one, mm -hmm. you can actually see that this is actually an equation of a sphere. And this sphere is called a block sphere, and that's the actual physical representation of a qubit. It's a sphere. Uh -huh. For which here is a uh, it is the zero state, and we have the one state. And Wait, I have every question. dot on that sphere is a separate qubit. So yeah, instead of our zero. computer, which has a one and a zero, we have infinitely many uh, possibilities for the, the bit to, to take. Just because this this podcast, first of all, this, just because this will become an audio podcast at some point for the listening uh, people. So Vasco just drew a sphere and uh, labeled the North Pole as zero and the South Pole as one. And Chrissy has a question. Okay, yeah. so my question was, as far as I know, this equation that is on the board is not of a sphere, but it's of a circle. And when we add complex numbers, we will become a sphere? Yes, uh, yeah, that, that's what I missed to say, that alpha and beta are complex numbers. Okay, complex numbers are real numbers plus something real multiplied by the square root of minus one. Complex numbers are two, uh, are two real numbers, but in front of one we just write an i. And the i is the imaginary number. In that yeah, but that adds that yeah. adds an extra, in a way, dimension because the way it's yeah, currently correct. on the board, it's just just circle. And then when you kind of wrap up the whole circle, it will become a three D object, and we live in three D world, which is great. And that's why we have complex numbers to actually represent. Again, it's a it's an idea that it really helps to uh, wrap up the whole world around us. But really quickly, just to get back to the, this idea, just to summarize, uh, we have a zero represented as an array of two digits. The first one represents the probability, well, the square root of the probability based on these equations, uh, that this will become a zero. And the second number becomes uh, the probability that this will become a one. And what these equations here show is that these numbers don't have to be just zeros and ones. The array uh, elements, the first, the zeroth and the first element don't have to be integers. They can be complex numbers, so they can be partial. So, for example, if the first number is 0 0.5, it, the, the only thing that it has to do is to sum up with the second number and become 1. So you can have any kind of probability that you can get from this, and that's what it means that it's a proposition. That's what I, what I kind of clicked for me. Basically, that means that whatever percentage of the time you have a zero and whatever percentage of the time you have a one, but you definitely have something in the end when, in physics terms, the qubit collapses into some kind of state. It collapses either to a zero or the one, but before it collapses, it's in a superposition and these two numbers represent the probability that it will collapse either to a zero or to a one. And with this, we explain the basics of what a qubit is. Chrissy. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, click subscribe and the bell button to get notified for our next live show. It's usually on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Universal Time. See ya!